clearance delivery, good morning, 97633. 97633, Columbia. Yes, sir, I should have a flight plan on file IFR over to Orangeburg for the Breakfast Club this morning. Can you check and see if you got it? I don't have it yet. Can I give you one right quick? Yeah, go ahead. 97633, Cessna 182, Slant Golf. Flying from uh, two people on board, four plus 30 fuel, 30 minutes in route, altitude 3,000 feet, departing as soon as you get uh, the clearance for me, and we are number one, runway 31, ready to go at your convenience. Air Columbia Approach, 97633 is with you on a 310 heading out of 700 feet. 7763 departure IDEF. There's your IDEF for 633. 633 radar contact, a mile northwest, Hamilton Island, 900 feet, clear direct to Orangeburg, expect the RNAV to fly. Alright, sir, Roger radar contact, clear direct to Orangeburg, 97633. Columbia 97633, we'll cancel with you. We broke out at 478 feet. 97633, Roger. IFR cancellation receipt, and you guys have a good one. Thank you, sir. We'll have a biscuit and bacon for you. Sounds great, man. Thank you. And Orangeburg traffic 97633, short final runway 5, Orangeburg.
be a heck. Is there anybody here who has not been to a breakfast club? One. Where are you from? Charleston. Charleston. Did you fly in? Yes, sir. What did you fly in? Uh, what is it? Uh, 172. 172. Well, thank you so much for coming. Y'all are now lifetime members. This is a very significant meeting because the Breakfast Club started here at this airport in 1938. Thomas Summers, who was a local businessman, and I think, is Sylvia still living? Sylvia, his daughter, is still, is, I think, is still here in town. And it started as a result of Thomas wanting to have some time on Sunday morning before church with Sylvia, and he liked airplanes, among other things, anything that went fast but he had a little air cooler. And he and Sylvia would get together early on a Sunday morning and pick an airport somewhere and go have breakfast. And then they'd come back and go to church. That's why we have breakfast club on Sunday morning. And it did not take long before some of his friends who were also pilots heard about what he was doing and called him up on Saturday night and said, where are you going today? We'll meet you. And from there, it began to grow. You, you gotta understand that we get one chance, one chance. You, you will never regret the things that we'll do. Cause I to be the ball for 30 plus hey, years, yeah, what, 38. 38 years, and there are still names on this of people decades ago. Gerald always said, don't worry, the names will fade. There are some old names on here. <laughs> the, anyway, the origin of the ball started, Mr. Summers did it kind of as a Joe, the person that made the worst landing who attended the breakfast club would have to sign the bouncing ball, take it home with them, and bring it back to the next meeting. Well, they lost so many balls between 1938 and 46 that it fell to the president to hold on to it. And it was all done in fun, but here lately we've had a good number of pilots coming, they're getting better, because the whole idea behind Breakfast Club is currency, proficiency, and we've had to change up on our reasons for signing the ball to anyone who makes a good landing, especially people flying tailwheels, or people who are flying unusual or rare airplanes. But today, I think I'm going to change things up and have a mass signing I would like every pilot who flew in IFR today to sign this thing. That was a top of the We're trying to stay current and we're doing a good job of it. This is the best IFR weather to stay current in because it's benign. You don't have to worry about flying into a thunderstorm. Y'all all deserve a hand. You did well. And IFR flying takes VFR flying to a whole new level and it exercises not only your piloting skills but your navigation skills and especially your communication skills. So it promotes every positive aspect about aviation from courtesy to communication, navigation, stick and rudder skills. Because that's we had some interesting wins on final today. They were 
they were going back and forth. And that's always, uh, especially in the slower, air, slower, lighter airplanes, if you're in a jet, it doesn't matter. It's heavy enough, you just put, put the needles together and it, they're going to stay there. But y'all all deserve a hand for coming in today. ball and the bowling bat. So my dad carried this around for nearly 40 years and it could have been around before that. I really don't know if this came from Bill Hawkins or not. But he carried this around all these years. It remained in his airplane and just till a couple of weeks ago when I went and pulled it out just as he left it and everything. It's been in the airplane the whole time because his last flight was to Winsboro, South Carolina. And a Cessna 180. And a 180. Post stroke now. But he had two takeoffs and two landings that he did that day, and that was his last flight. And so the bag had remained there ever since, and I just pulled it out a couple of months ago. Probably, I think it was June or something when I, I took it out. But it's just as he left it. It's been there all these years because it's coming up on five years that he's been gone. We miss him every day. But I did want, Dad loved this airport. My great. His grandmother, my great grandmother, lived right around the corner from here. We've been coming here since we were kids. He loved Orangeburg and the airport, and I wanted to present this to Orangeburg to put in whatever display case. We're going to put it in our display case, and we love your father very much. Oh, well, too. thank you. He, he loved the community, loved flying, promoted it every chance he could in South yes, Carolina. Numbers to zero. Yes. <laughs> Second number is a zero. Third number is a six. 
Fourth number is a five. Oh, okay. Who's Not still me. in? Not me. Fifth number is a two. Still in? Last number's a one. Who's got 521? Oh, boy, you got something that makes me feel like Thank you guys for having us for the breakfast club this morning. 